Hi there, great to see you. Thanks for so much for joining me. And I've uh, just had a, f a beautiful few minutes walk walking around our garden, listening to the beautiful bird song, which we hear every morning. Sadly, also we uh, heard uh, some. Oh, I heard some traffic as more cars get back on the road. But the birds, uh, bird song is is wonderful, and it's just not lovely to be able to walk around the garden before uh, the, the busyness of the day uh, crowds in. Now, it's interesting that uh, Jesus, uh, when he was teaching people about the things of God, used illustrations from nature, the birds of the air, uh, the flowers of the field, the farmer go who goes out to sow. And it's natural for a preacher or someone who wants to uh, explain something or, or anybody who's giving a, a lecture or a talk to use illustrations from uh, the world around us. A few uh, weeks ago, I uh, was about to brush my teeth and I realised the, tube, the toothpaste tube was empty. So I went searching and I found, uh, I found one. And uh, it's strange because it's a black uh, toothpaste tube and usually they're white, aren't they? This is a uh, cleansing charcoal toothpaste. And I discovered to my uh, surprise that when I squeezed some toothpaste out, it was uh, black, black toothpaste. Here's one I did earlier. And that seems rather strange. A bit of a paradox, isn't it? That a black toothpaste is intended to whiten your teeth, to keep your teeth clean. You thought that it would make them all black and uh, not very nice looking, but it appears to work. And that reminded me of, of the fact that in the Gospels, there are many apparent paradoxes, things that don't, at first sight or first hearing, first reading, don't seem to make a great deal of sense and I've just made a note of a few of the things that Jesus said for example he said this you've heard it said love your neighbor and hate your enemies but I tell you love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you now that is uh, certainly a strange thing to say love your enemies the enemies are the the people who are against you trying to stop you doing what what you want to do who are uh, wanting to defeat you and yet we are to love them. Not only that, but when uh, you are persecuted, pray for those who are persecuting you. I was listening to a YouTube uh, clip yesterday of a man, an Egyptian Christian, who had been severely persecuted, tortured for his faith. And yet Jesus says to pray for those who persecute you, those who stand against you, those who mistreat you. That's a, a, a paradox, isn't it? He also said that there is more happiness in giving than receiving. And that stands against the uh, what the world tells us, what society tells us, tells us to, to get more and more for yourself. Build up your bank balance, get a bigger house, a better car, a more important job. Lift yourself up. Take what you can. And yet Jesus says it's, it's, more, it's better and you get actually more happiness in giving than receiving. And I think that though, though that might appear to be a paradox, I think some of us found that to be true. We know what, what joy it gives if we give a gift that is, is well received. And even in the giving, there is something that moves us. Jesus said, whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and the gospel will save it. Well, that doesn't seem to make sense, does it? If we're willing to give our life away for Jesus and for the sake of the gospel, we gain it. And it's interesting that Jesus often spoke, but didn't give an explanation. He, he encouraged people to work work out what he was saying. He told stories without always giving uh, the meaning behind them. Jesus said, whoever wants to be great amongst you must be your servant. Whoever wants to be first among you must be the slave of all. So Jesus is saying greatness is, is in servanthood. Greatness is in giving ourselves for others, serving others. And again, that flies against much of what our society would tell us. Jesus speaking these apparent paradoxes. 
but he's teaching us that the gospel of the kingdom is is a gospel of paradox in many ways, a gospel which turns things on their head, or maybe turns things the right way up. And then we could think of the Apostle Paul. He said, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecution, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. When I am weak, then I am strong. That, that doesn't make sense, does it? Unless we understand that Paul is saying it's in our weakness that we trust completely in God. We, we recognise our need of his strength. Uh, the chap I was talking about uh, a few minutes ago who had been persecuted said this. Christians are a bit like tea bags. You never know what strength they have until you put them in hot water. I thought that was interesting. Paul also said God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God, when he wants to choose somebody to serve him in a particular purpose, doesn't look for necessarily great natural gifts, great abilities, uh, someone who's got great oratory to be a preacher. No, he chooses ordinary people, sometimes very weak people, people who struggle with life in, in many ways. I know that's bit to be true in my own case. God chooses people because in weakness, God is able to give his strength. In foolish things, God is able to reveal his wisdom. And then uh, finally, Paul says this, we proclaim the crucified Christ, a message that is offensive to the Jews and nonsense to the Gentiles. At the heart of our Christian faith is the message of one who died on a cross. And that uh, was something that the disciples themselves really struggled to grasp. The Messiah, the one promised long, was the one who was going to suffer and die. They didn't understand how that could be. And uh, to the Jews, they knew that uh, the law stated that someone uh, killed in that way was cursed. To the Gentiles, it didn't, to the non-Jews, it didn't make any sense. Your saviour is crucified a criminal's death. Now many people, uh, including myself, wear a cross around their neck. This one is one that uh, I bought many years ago. In fact, it hasn't got a clasp, so you can't really take it off. It just about fit over my head. I'm not sure whether I'll ever be able to take it off. I don't really want to. And yet it's strange, isn't it, that we wear an instrument of torture round our necks. You wouldn't wear a, an electric chair, would you? You wouldn't wear a gallows round your neck, and yet we wear a cross. Why? Because that's the central paradox of our faith. Because it's through the cross, Christ's sacrifice and his resurrection, that we have the hope of eternal life and the knowledge of our sins forgiven. So... The gospel is uh, full of paradoxes. And yet, when we see, when we understand, they turn out to be the truth of the kingdom. So I better go now and uh, brush my teeth before the rest of the day begins. God bless you. Have a great day.